Hi guys, Teacher Paige here. Another class of animal encounters. So let's get started. Um, today we're going to be talking about an amphibian. Um, and, and then, okay, let's review what an amphibian is first. Let's, let's take a step back. So an amphibian falls under the vertebrae family. And if we all remember correctly, a vertebrae has a backbone. So just to recap a little bit on amphibians, they have a backbone. They are cold-blooded, or the other word that we use is ectotherm. Um, they don't have scales, and most of them lay jelly-like eggs in water. And then they, um, the baby amphibians, they breathe with gills, but later develop lungs to be able to breathe on land. So a good example of that is a tadpole, which gives you your hint about what we're going to be learning about today. So if this is an amphibian, and it has gills when it's born, we are gonna be learning about toads and frogs and the differences between them. So let's dive right in. And I have got um, a video. And in this video, I want you guys to watch closely because in this there is an animal in there that is not an amphibian. So watch closely. And let's see if we can pick up on the mistake that they made making this video as we learn about amphibians. Let's see, full screen, there we go. Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at a truly amazing group of vertebrates. When they're born, they usually live in water, but when they grow up and become adults, they spend most of their time on land. We present the amphibians. All amphibians have some common characteristics that you should know about so you can recognize and differentiate them. Amphibians have thin, bare skin with no hairs and scales to protect them. Most have four legs and a membrane between their toes that allows them to move much better in the water. Amphibians are oviparous but they don't incubate their eggs after laying them. They abandon them and don't care for their young. Not very good parents, huh? When they hatch, they're small larvae and live in water. Slowly, very slowly, their bodies go through a process called metamorphosis. During this process, the body of the amphibian changes. Their front and rear legs, their limbs grow and their heads and their bodies develop, so they finally look like their parents. In the early stages of their lives, amphibians breathe through gills. But when they grow up and become adults, they breathe with their lungs. The problem is, their lungs are very small and cannot get all the oxygen they need to live. But nature is very clever and has solved this problem by allowing them to breathe and get the oxygen they need through their skin. That's why they need to be near water to keep their skin wet. In the early stages of their life, some amphibians are herbivores, but when they grow up, most become carnivores. So they need to hunt. Some have a long, sticky tongue they shoot out to capture prey. Aren't amphibians fascinating and also a bit strange? Ah. 
So let's remember the most important characteristics. Amphibians are vertebrates. They're oviparous. In the early stages of their life, they live in water as larvae. But slowly they change until they look like their parents. This process of change is called metamorphosis. Amphibians are carnivores, so they have to hunt to eat. They have thin, smooth skin and breathe through their skin and with their lungs. Amphibians are so interesting, aren't they? Goodbye for now, everyone, and don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning. At the very beginning, they showed an animal with scales, and we just learned that amphibians don't have scales because their skin has to stay very wet in order for them to help get their oxygen. So they showed a lizard on that video. A lizard is not an amphibian, right? We're gonna learn about lizards another time, but not today. We're on toads and frogs. And um, we also learned another word in there too, which is metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. So that is what happens when a tadpole is born. It's just a little tiny thing, kind of looks like a fish, and it, it has gills. But then as it grows older, it develops legs and arms, and its tail disappears, and it becomes um, a frog and looks like its parents. So, and its gills go away, and it develops lungs. So that is our true definition of an amphibian. All right, let's keep learning here. Um, I thought that was really cool that they continue breathing or their skin helps them with oxygen. I thought that was really cool. So the animal kingdom, we reviewed about what an amphibian is. Look at those cute little frogs on there too. Isn't that fun? All right, did um, we talked about the mistake that we saw, the lizard, right? The lizard is not an amphibian. So um, last week we, or nope, sorry, we did not. This is different. <laughs> we did not learn about the salamanders. We will get there. Um, okay, here's the page I wanted. Here we go. Make it big so you guys can see those pictures. Here we go. Okay, so can you guys tell the difference between a frog and a toad? All right, because frogs and toads are both members of the same class, an amphibia, which means that they are both amphibians. Um, there are about 6,480 known species of frogs and toads worldwide. They are found in every continent except Antarctica. It's probably a little too cold, right? So frogs and toads are closely related and they share very many similar characteristics. And we're gonna see what some of those characteristics are. So to start with, frogs can look and act quite differently from toads. Some of the differences that you may notice are about frogs is that they need to live near water to survive. Remember their, that their skin has to stay wet in order to get their oxygen. That's why they have to be near water. They have mostly smooth, moist skin that may look or feel slimy. They have narrow, a narrow body with round eyes that bulge. They have very long hind legs that help them take long, high jumps. And frogs are typically laid, they lay their eggs in clumps or clusters. Kind of look like that picture on the right which kind of looks gross, huh? All right, toads, they don't need to live near water to survive. They have very rough, dry, bumpy skin. They have a, a wide body with oval eyes and they don't bulge as much as a frog's eyes do. They have short hind legs that allow them to take small hops rather than jumps. Their skin secretes a yucky tasting poison to stop bigger animals from eating them. So it tastes nasty. So the minute that something comes and gets them, it, it puts off this nastiness and it's also poison. So toads typically lay their eggs in long strings, like that picture on the right. And these, um, these characteristics of frogs and toads, they is always something that doesn't fit within those guidelines. We have many rule breakers in the animal kingdom and Toads and frogs have a couple of rule breakers that they 
that they mess things up for us a little bit. But for the most part, those are the differences. Okay, so there are many, many unique and unique species of frogs and toads. And so we're gonna take a look at just a few. Um, we've got this video. Let me go see if I can pull it up here. This is called a pebble toad. And I want you guys to really pay attention how it walks, or it doesn't hop. <laughs> it walks and crawls, which was very fascinating. So see if you can pick up some of, some of the pebble toad's characteristics. Taking a minute to load. These rocks may seem a paradise for a toad. It's even wetter than the forest below, and there are no snakes. But there is a hunter here. Waterfall toad, the pebble toad can't hop, but it has a different defense. It tenses its muscles, becomes rigid and turns itself into a rubber ball. It's so tiny and weighs so little that bouncing doesn't hurt it at all. innovations like these are one of the okay so pretty interesting a pebble toad literally turns into a pebble <laughs> so it doesn't have the poison it has the um uniqueness of turning into a rock so that's a cool species right of a toad um, here is another one, and I don't know if I'm saying this right, but it's a Suriname toad. And let's check out what this does. It looks very interesting. Let's see what this does. In the course of half a billion years of evolution, some bizarre ways to help newborns have been tried. A Suriname toad has eggs that hatch in pockets on her back. Skin care, as it were. They have grown into tiny toads and are now leaving home. Her hospitality has to be worth it. More must survive. Once out from under her skin, they're off to find food. The next step for pioneering parents. Okay, that one is super interesting, right? She carries her babies on her back and then they just grow and leave to go find food. Super interesting. Okay, here's the last one, and this is a desert rain frog. And pull this one up. Maybe some of these you guys have actually seen, which would be super cool if you have.
Hmm. Maybe this doesn't want to work for us. There is a true definition of a squeaky toy, right? So there's some pictures. Let me make this bigger for you. Here's some pictures of a desert rain frog. So that is super interesting. Look, this guy is holding it. Um, they do look like a little squeaky toy, along with sounding like it, don't they? All right. So we talked a little bit about metamorphosis in the beginning, but um, frogs go through a change and it's called metamorphosis. So they start as an egg, they turn into a tadpole with gills, and then the tadpole, it grows. Um, they grow a skein over the, over the gills, and then they grow limbs, and then they turn into a frog. And along with that, the, that's when they develop their lungs and they can be on land and they have to stay wet in order to keep the oxygen flowing through their skin. So that is a little bit about frogs and toads. So just to recap really quick, frogs live near water. They are very slimy. They have to stay wet so that they can help absorb oxygen because their lungs are so little that helps them breathe. And then toads, they have rough, dry skin, kind of can be bumpy as well. And they also, their defense mechanism is that they can, they can secrete a poison, nasty taste, so they can get away from a predator. Um, anyway, I hope you guys learned something new today. Hope it was fun learning about toads and frogs. I don't really have an activity to do for you today. If you want to draw again a toad or a frog, maybe if you like a toad better, draw him in, you know, draw him in the water. If you like a frog better, um, sorry, if you like a frog better, draw him in the water. And if you like a toad better, draw him like by a tree or something. Um, but no activity, do something on your own, be creative, come up with something. If you want to send it in to me, that would be great. Um, if not, that's okay. And until next time, thanks for joining me for Animal Encounters. See you later.